adding the second floor in Revit is a stepping stone in your Revit skills. It's going to be where your skill level is really tested because the connection between floors is a great way to develop your project and find out how this system works together. But if you set it up properly, it could be hampering the rest of your project. Hey guys, I'm Brandon, founder and architect of residence with I Am The Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the second floor properly, including working with the stair, the floor footprint, and the rails. If you're looking for more tips in Revit, check out my 5 Revit tricks for making better BIM models. See the link in the description below. And if you're new to the IM Studio channel, consider subscribing for more tutorials and tips every week in the top architectural software. To work on our second floor, we're going to have to probably use a little bit of um, tools that are in Revit to see what's going on and make sure things are working with the first and second level. We want to have a second floor that looks over both the dining space and it looks over into the um, living room space. So that's going to be our challenge for putting a second floor together and working with stairs that will go from the top to the bottom. As we can see from our second floor currently it looks down below and so that's that's a useful thing to say where are we going to put our stair. We're going to go ahead and put our stair first and then we'll start building our second floor around the stair. So if we go to our stair button, and it's very straightforward. We're going up from the first to the uh, second level, and we'll set that in the in the properties. Base level is level one, then the level two. As we look in here, we we can see the actual number of risers, and desired is the same. So we we have eighteen risers, and so. So that's fine. We can just go in here, click OK. And we're going to look in our 3D view so we can see what's going on. And so if we look at our 3D view and we just hide our roof, see that our, our rail currently runs to the floor, but there's no problem. We can change the shape of the floor go back to level two and we could very simply make a line for the edge of the stair and uh, go down and we can go to fillet and now we have we probably want to have our wall extend to the edge of the kitchen and we might want to even have it where there's a bit of a walkway here. So at the end of the day, we'll have a little bit of a overlook and we could put a little bedroom in here and uh, And since this is 10 by 10, we could have a, a simple little space or, you know, it's a possibility that it might be a little bit um, small. Um, and so we have maybe a little room for a balcony here. Let's go ahead and look at that. And it says, do we want to attach it to anything? We say no. Let's look at our 3D to see what's happening with our stair. So immediately you see that we have a stair that comes up to this um, second floor. It's a little walkway. And we have for our stair a little bit of rail. But what if we uh, wanted to have a little more gentler stair? So we have it um, long here. What if we wanted to have like bit of a stop in, in between so very nice to have like more of an authentic designer stair so we actually can do landing so let's try a landing between this stair right now we have we have uh, 18 uh, if we come back down and we we start at 9 and we add a simple landing uh, and we'll just go ahead and We actually uh, probably want to just make another run. There's probably several ways of doing this. And it, it tells you like when you're making it, it's making an automatic uh, landing in between the runs. So, and I'll just show you this so you can see, uh, you can't directly make a landing. We actually cr go backwards. We actually could have made it where our run would start and go in this direction and it's 
showing how many stairs we need. So you know, there's there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, and that way could let us uh, shorten our stair entirely um, so that people could get up over here. The only thing, of course, would be to say, when people when there's a turn, are we having enough space? And one great thing about Revit as, as well is we could always do this. It's parametrically uh, located. Uh, excuse me. Make sure you're clicking the right point. So if we click on this stair, we click on our arrow. If we want to do something like that, it automatically adjusts the top riser. And so now we have a stair that turns a little bit, which might be very useful for us because a landing would uh, soften the space a little bit. We only have to mind that people would be walking underneath here. So we don't need that to be too small. So let's try this one now. And let's align it with our desired balcony edge. And also let's align it with our wall. And so this sort of stair would give us a few more opportunities um, here. And uh, let's look at how that would look in 3D. So yeah, we can see it be a nice little stair that um, people could walk under and it could get to the top level. So let's uh, let's work on our top level to make sure that it can work with this stair. We're going to just choose one of the lines that we're going to work with that line. And here we are, choosing that line. And uh, we'll choose this line. And we're just going to fillet. And we're going to fillet here. then we're going to uh, make sure that we have everything lining up. And we're not going to attach anything right now. And so now we have our second level. Let's um, both work with uh, adding some a few walls just for privacy sake. Uh, we can say we can make a little space but it's sort of maybe a modernist loft up here. So a little concourse through here would be nice to help s set up this space to be a nice little loft um, area. Okay, so we can add a rail the same way that uh, we've added one outside uh, where we just come in here and we'll have to make one for each side. And we'll add another rail. And you could always, you know, make the um, make a shortcut that you understand. So it's it's never that you have to always press the buttons in Revit. It's good to know um, quite a few shortcuts. All right, so we've made that line. Uh, we see that this line was sort of missed because it didn't go fully. But uh, I think we have a solid line now. These are all on the second floor, so now we look up and see the second floor. And we see a nice little set of spaces. And because uh, this doesn't need to go up, we can uh, go ahead and make this. Uh, we'll have to decide what we'll do with this one. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and make both of these going up to level two for right now. And what it could be is um, just a very simple little partition um, that people could look over. So uh, alas, and we're gonna select these walls and make sure they stop at level three. That's where our roof is. And we'll go back to our level two and put a little door in here. So we have a little space upstairs, a little bit of refuge. Um, all right, so that's our second floor. We probably wanna use that same style that we have in our first floor. So, and we'll, we'll work on that. So now you have a second floor in Redmond. Thanks for watching. This has been Brandon with I Am The Studio. If you got a lot out of this video, 
Give it a like and subscribe to the IM Studio channel for more content and tutorials uh, in the best of architectural design software. If you need help with your Revit skills, see the links for our complete Revit guide for you to grow in your professional skills in Revit. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.